The Washington Commanders had a season to forget. From disappointed performances to coaching changes to players being traded, so much just went wrong. After being on the hot seat for so long, Ron Rivera was finally fired and Sam Howe was eventually traded, truly marking the beginning of a new era. Under the leadership of a new regime, the Commanders are ready to officially turn the page and start fresh with the new rookie quarterback at the helm. The question is, will the Commanders find redemption in 2024? What's crackalacking is your boy Baroshmo, just in case you did not know so. And today I welcome you to the deep dive series where we're going to be taking a close look at each and every NFL team and project how they will do in 2024, starting with your Washington Commanders. So let's go ahead and reflect, take a look back at how their 2023 season went. Well, they opened the year with some optimism as second-year quarterback Sam Howe opened the season as the full-time starter, and they won their first two games, only to get the brakes beaten off of them by the Buffalo Bills in Week 3. However, things looked promising the following week in a close loss to division rival Philadelphia Eagles. But then they entered a wood chipper versus the Chicago Bears. They would go 1-2 and two in their next three games before trading Montez Sweat and Chase Young. Things would only go downhill from there as they ended the season on an eight-game losing streak where defensive coordinator Jack Del Rio would be fired after getting whooped by the Dallas Cowboys on Thanksgiving. Sam Howe and the offensive line would have their struggles during that losing streak, and at the end of the year, Josh Harris would move on from GM Martin Mayhew and head coach Ron Rivera. Ultimately, it was a very ugly season for the Commanders, in terms of efficiency, as you could tell, both offensively and defensively, they only were in the top 20 when it came to their Russian offense. They gave up a lot of points and they didn't score a lot of points. They were 25th in points scored while being dead last in points allowed. They did have one of the harder schedules when it came to the NFL but still, this wasn't exactly the result Commander fans were looking for this season from their squad. Josh Harris would bring in former Vikings GM Rick Spielman and former Golden State GM Bob Myers to help search for a new GM and a new head coach. Adam Peters was hired as the GM. He was formerly the assistant GM for the 49ers, and they would go on to hire Dallas Cowboys defensive coordinator Dan Quinn as their new head coach. He would also bring along his secondary coach, Joe Whitman Jr., as the defensive coordinator. And then they hired Cliff Kingsbury as the OC. Real quick, I gotta give a shout out to today's sponsor, Underdog Fantasy. I absolutely love Underdog Fantasy because I love football, and now that the football season is far and away it doesn't mean my betting season has to be because they do all kinds of sports whether it's baseball basketball esports even they got you covered whether that's weekly best ball or my favorite higher lower on player props so if you sign up at underdog fantasy using promo code bro schmo then they will give you a first time deposit up to 250 dollars that's right that's right that's right that's right that's right so if you're gonna go and bet Bet with Underdog Fantasy, use promo code BROSHMO, take advantage of this offer, but please bet responsibly and bet within your means. The Commanders are losing some significant snaps from last year, whether it's them releasing or just choosing not to re-sign some players in like Nick Gates, you got Sadiq Charles, Charles Leno, uh, Curtis Samuel, Antonio Gibson, Logan Thomas, uh, they traded Sam Howell, but that also extends to the defenses, they didn't bring back Cameron Curl or uh, Kendall Fuller, Cody Barden. And I mean, they traded Montez Sweat and Chase Young during the season. So they're losing some, some significant snaps, but they also brought in a ton of players with one being Austin Eckler, who's gonna be a pretty good compliment to Brian Robinson. The question is, is there is there anything left in the tank when it comes to Austin Eckler? Eckler. They also bring in Bobby Wagner, who almost signed with the Cowboys last year under Dan Quinn, but just financially just ended up not working out. He ends up going to the Seahawks, but now he comes in here and he's going to be a good veteran body for that linebacker core. They also get Marcus Mariota to be the backup quarterback there, as well as bringing in Zach Ertz, which I kind of mentioned earlier, who's familiar with Cliff Kingsbury. I think he's a little, you know, at the end of the line, 
but uh, it's nice to bring in a familiar face when you have a new coach and staff. They also signed Dante Fowler, who's again familiar with Dan Quinn. That isn't the only Dan Quinn guy they bring in as he brings in Dorrance Armstrong on the defensive line as well. They do sign late Frankie Louvu. So they really add to that linebacking core. I mean, suddenly like they added quite a bit to that front seven, hoping, well, it to be much better than it was last year. Uh, Dan Quinn does bring his center. I say his center, but I mean, he was the DC, but he brings Cowboys center Tyler Biadash. Biadash? I've heard it pronounced both ways. So they get their center there. They do uh, eventually sign uh, a left guard as well in Nick Allegretti, who I think is more of a bridge option, but they re-sign uh, Cornelius Lucas, who, which, I mean, whoever ends up starting at left tackle, it's going to be very fascinating. And we'll talk about that when we get to the uh, the offense Per se, but they also bring in Jeremy Shin, which he's listed as safety here, but his role in this defense, I think, is going to be more as a dime backer, as we've seen that with Dan Quinn's defense, it's kind of a big and a prominent role. So I think this defense might be hella fun. It truly might be hella fun. They also bring in Keelan, uh, Cleveland Farrell on the defensive line there at edge. And Michael Davis at corner, because I mean, the, the cornerback room was just one big struggle bus. You lose your best corner in Kendall Fuller. They bring in Mike Davis. You don't really know, or at least you kind of hoping for the best in Emmanuel Forbes, but he was also the last regime's last first round pick. He wasn't drafted by this previous regime. Doesn't mean that they're going to give up on him, but just something to keep in mind. Benjamin St. Juice, who was kind of a big slot last year, but has the size to play on the outside. He's also going to compete for uh, for starting snaps there on the outside. They got they bring back Jeremy Reeves, which I think he could be a really good starting safety, or at least a solid starting safety, but he's just kind of stuck as a really good special teamer, which, hey, that's A-OK. -okay. That's fine. They do sign a kicker in McManus. And they also go with Noah Igbignogany to kind of help out with that cornerback room dolphins legend dolphins great former dolphins first round pick noah big big nagani fins up baby fins up uh jameson crowder is going to come in with the uh receiver room and compete for that slot spot as we're going to see that slot spot is kind of wide open it kind of is wide open as they also signed zacchaeus who is also one of these kind of like mid-level slot players in uh the nfl and then they also bring over another dolphins great <laughs> and michael dieter to be good depth there at the uh at the center position but he, he could play i think he could play guard as well so he just gives them interior depth all the way through now going to the draft as with the second overall pick they take Jaden daniels to be the new face of the franchise he is their franchise quarterback and seemingly going to be the starter day one a guy that kind of came out of nowhere as a first round pick during the 2023 season during that heisman campaign it's going to be very fascinating to see how he fits into this cliff kingsbury offense and i think he fits in very well in the second round they take jerzon newton who is going to compete on the interior there maybe be more of a long-term option over like uh, jonathan allen which we'll talk more about with the defense but he did have a fracture on his other foot so that's going to be something to kind of watch out for see is he going to be good by training camp and uh how involved in the rotation is he going to be in year one and then they grabbed in the second round as well mike sainra still who is through and through a slot corner great fit for dan quinn's system this definitely probably pushes benjamin st juice to the outside and probably Quan Martin into more of a safety role. And then they also get in the second round. That's right, three second round picks. Ben Sinnott, this is their future at tight end. I absolutely love this pick. He was my tight end two in this class. Brandon Coleman might end up being their left tackle of the future. He's long, 
We'll see. I don't know if he's a starter from day one. We'll talk about when we get there. But they close out day two by taking Luke McCaffrey, who's going to compete with Zacchaeus and with Crowder for that slot wide receiver role. They close out the draft with guys like Jordan McGee, who I was a big fan of, linebacker at Temple, Dominique Hampton, who I was a big fan of, safety out of Washington, and Javante, uh, Javante Jean uh, Baptiste, edge out of Notre Dame. But let's take a look at the here and now with the coaching staff as Dan Quinn is now the head coach for the Washington Commanders, formerly the defensive coordinator of the Dallas Cowboys. But it's not like he's lacking head coaching experience. He was the former head coach of the Atlanta Falcons. And before that, he spent his time being the DC and defensive line coach for the Seattle Seahawks under Pete Carroll. He also actually coached quite a few other places, my Dolphins included, but also with the Niners and the Jets. But what to expect when it comes to Dan Quinn and his defense. And I think you're going to be dealing with a very adaptable coach. You truly, truly are. This was a guy coming from that Seattle three, that cover three, but he showed the ability to adapt, especially in Dallas, as he moved more towards a cover one heavy system. Now, the past couple of years, that has dipped a bit, but it's still large in part a cover one man heavy defense, though he will incorporate cover four and Tampa two and whatnot. When it comes to the defensive front, you're playing with an attack in four three, which incorporates elements from a three, four type of defense. And I mean, this worked out really nicely with Micah Parsons and yeah, he doesn't have Micah Parsons now, but still Dan Quinn is a guy that, that can create pressure or at least scheme it up because he, he likes to incorporate a lot of stunts. He, he doesn't shy away from blitzing. He, he's been in the top 12 in blitzing for most of his tenure as a DC or as a head coach with last year, kind of being an outlier where he was 13th in the NFL when it comes to blitzing. He does bring over his uh, secondary coach there in Dallas as the new DC and Joe Witt Jr. He, uh, he actually has quite a bit of experience uh, as a secondary coach, uh, not just only under Dan Quinn uh, with the Cowboys, but he was also there with them under uh, or there with him when he was in Atlanta. But he also has has experience under guys like Steve Wilkes in Cleveland and Dom Capers in Green Bay. Let's talk about Cliff Kingsbury. That's kind of the, okay, what are we getting? Are we getting a, a good OC or is this just going to be kind of more of the same? Is, are we going back to like the, uh, the, 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 the Turner years and whatnot? And you're going to see my rankings down here and how I have them, how I have these coaches ranked is on a grading scale, A to D, and it's by it's by comparison to the rest of the league because there's a big misconception when it comes to Cliff Kingsbury and oh this air raid offense right first off it's more of an air raid ish <laughs> offense that's uh, it, he it's not like this this college level Mike Leach type of offense that he adapted in the NFL and I mean for honestly it, it wasn't really that way during his uh, time at Texas Tech. It, this is a system where, yeah, he likes to stretch the field horizontally with playmakers, but he likes to incorporate his tight end, a la Zach Ertz. That's why he's with the squad. But it's also a, a scheme that heavily utilizes the running game. And that's something you really can't say about the college level air raid offense. When, when, Kingsbury was the head coach for the Arizona Cardinals. He was in the top 10 in terms of attempts, rushing attempts. This is a man that liked to run the football, and he was also in the top 10, usually top 10 to top 12, in terms of efficiency when running the football. That's why I got a B-plus grade when it comes to this running offense. The thing is, with Cliff Kingsbury, where the faults lied, was kind of in the passing game, the passing concepts, uh, how to layer plays. So it, it's going to be very fascinating to see Cliff Kingsbury because 
remote like he is relatively a young nfl coach truly is it his first experience his first taste of the nfl was as a head coach for the arizona cardinals prior to that he was the head coach of the texas tech red raiders and prior to that he was just an oc for the houston cougars and the texas a&m aggies so i'm i'm gonna be i'm very fast and i'm very intrigued to see how this all will go down with cliff kingsbury and i, I truly expect especially now with Jaden daniels and i'll talk more i guess more about that when it comes to the offense but i expect to see a lot of rpos we saw a lot of rpos in in arizona but i think when you're dealing with the the athleticism and just the pure threat that Jaden daniels is with his feet we're gonna see a hell lot of RPOs, but I want to look at the rest of the coaching staff as well as Larry Izzo. You might remember that name. I do because uh, I'm a Dolphins fan and I hate the Patriots, but he's going to be the special game, uh, special teams coordinator for the Washington Commanders. And I actually like a lot of this coaching staff, like David Blau, yo, <laughs> assistant quarterbacks coach. That's a name that uh, that brings up some uh, memories, right? I think that's just kind of funny. That's just kind of wild. But they also bring in uh, Sheriff Floyd. You might remember him, uh, at least him being in the NFL uh, with the Minnesota Vikings before. I think injuries really derailed his career. But he's he was a D-line coach under uh, Dan Quinn. Now he's over here with the uh, with him in Washington. William Gay, former Pittsburgh corner. He's going to be the DB there for DB coach, assistant DB coach for the Washington Commanders. They also have uh, Brian Johnson, yay, former OC for the uh, Philadelphia Eagles. Hey, he's just an assistant. Maybe it'll go well here. Uh, they do retain Ryan Kerrigan as the uh, assistant pass rush specialist here. And I like that. I love seeing former players, like players I watched growing up now be coaches i just i find that very very interesting anthony lynn is on this coaching staff as the run game coordinator and we also have daryl tapp a name that might also bring some uh memories for some people uh, if you remember his time with the seattle seahawks as a player i remember him tearing it up for virginia tech but he is the d-line coach there for the washington commanders but let's talk offense you'll see my grades here they go from a to d and it's based on where they i rank them in comparison to the league and the tricky thing is with these rookie quarterbacks you truly don't know what you're gonna get in year one that's why the grade is so low currently for a uh, Jaden daniels so again take that one with a little pinch of salt but i tried to also incorporate like the whole group the whole positional group but jay daniels will be the starter from day one they are going to have quite a few new starters uh especially on the offensive line as i expect nicholas allegretti there to be the left guard and of course tyler biadash i'm gonna go with biadash as the star and center and they probably have one of the best guards in the nfl and sam cosme well honestly i think it kick out the tackle and do a okay i don't know why they moved him to guard like i think he's just as good as a tackle but he is easily their best offensive lineman. Uh, we'll talk about the battle that probably will be had at left tackle, but I currently I'm going to give it to the vet in Cornelius Lucas. They did choose to bring him back in. Andrew Wiley is kind of like nothing special. I didn't like the sign-in when it, at the time. He ended up being a very mid, and I'm saying that at, at best, a mid-level right tackle in the NFL. You got the receiving core with led by scary Terry McLaurin. Jahan Dotson kind of coming off a down year, a sophomore slump, so to speak. So we'll see how everything goes with that. But I got him being a starter on the outside. He's also a guy that could probably kick into the slot. And I'm going to give the edge to Zacchaeus as the starter in the slot. Though, again, I kind of mentioned that earlier in the video that this is going to be a battle between guys like Luke McCaffrey, the rookie that they uh, drafted in the third round, and Jamison Crowder. At tight end, I'm going to go with Ben Sinnott. 
I'm going to go with Ben Sennett. I really liked Ben Sennett. I had him as my tight end, too. I think Zach Ertz, again, he's he's closer to the end than he is the beginning. So I think while he will be on the field, he won't be on the field like a ton, a ton. I think we're going to see a good mix of like Ben Sennett and uh, like John Bates, who's a really good uh, blocking tight end. But the running back room, man, it's... I think this is this is Brian. This is gonna be Brian Robinson's offense, right? They're gonna run it through him. I think Austin Eckler is there just to be a compliment, a guy that they could that they can use in the passing game. I think Brian Robinson is kind of the the, the James Connor for this offense, and that's how Cliff Kingsbury is gonna look at him and utilize him. But let's go take a look at some of the depth that this squad has offensively. As uh, I already mentioned, Marcus Mariota. They also have touchdown Jesus, Sam Hartman, uh, as a UDFA coming in. Um, Going to be competing for that uh, quarterback three spot with Jeff Driscoll. And then the running back room is going to be rounded out with guys like uh, uh, Chris Rodriguez, who they drafted in the sixth round uh, in 2023. They bring in Jeremy Nichols. Uh, I, I, like, I like Michael Wiley, man. I think he, he has a good chance to stick to the roster just because of what he can do in the passing game. And really, the only other guy they have in the running back room is Austin Eckler, who, I don't know. I think Wiley probably starts on the practice squad, and if injury hits on Austin Eckler, I think, uh, I think we could see Wiley uh, actually make some contributions and get some touches in this uh, offense. They also have Austin Jones there. At a USC, formerly a Stanford. Uh, it, to me, that's kind of a big nothing uh, burger. But going to the the weapons, the pass catchers. Uh, you got, of course, Scary Terry. You got Jahan Dotson. Kind of talked about um, the, the battle there for who will be playing in the slot. But you got Deami Brown there as wide receiver four, as your vertical uh, separator speedster. When he's coming in, you know what he's doing. He's going deep. He's, he's going to be looking to go yard. So I expect him to make the roster along with... Uh, man, maybe they retain all three of those slot guys. I really do. Uh, Dax uh, Millen, kind of arguably also a slot guy. Maybe Mitchell Tinsley cracks this roster. Maybe he makes this roster. That'd be so cool. I liked him uh, over at Penn State. Uh, kind of a... Kind of a smaller receiver but can create after the catch kind of a shifty route runner a uh, bit of a long shot to make the roster but definitely someone to watch out for everyone else i'm just kind of like eh, whatever uh they, they they got bird there veteran body doubt he makes the squad uh they they, they bring in marcus rosmi uh jack saint who he's big but he's slow so he brings some size but he's slow i don't think he makes the roster I think when it, when it when it comes down to it, you got Scary Terry, you got Dotson, uh, you're gonna have Brown, and then I think uh, the next three receivers will be those slot guys in McCaffrey, Zacchaeus, and Crowder going to the tight ends because we're talking weapons. Tight ends are weapons. You got Ertz, you got Sinnott, you got Bates. Those are your three for sure. If they retain a four tight end, the battle is gonna be between um, um, Armani Rogers, who unfortunately was hurt last year, and Cole Turner, who's kind of been the, been with the squad since being drafted. I really don't have a dog in this fight. I like the upside of Rodgers. Can he stay healthy? They also signed Colson Yankoff uh, from UCLA, who he's not really a tight end. He's more of a special teamer. He was a guy that was kind of positionless at UCLA coming out. And, I mean, if they're going to hone down on his position being tight end, I don't know if he makes this roster at the very... If he makes the roster, it's because of what he could do on special teams. But, 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 could be a very nice practice squad body. Going to the offensive line, the battle is at left tackle. Cornelius Lucas, Brandon Coleman, who they just drafted this year in the third round, and then their former fourth round draft pick, Braden Daniels, who unfortunately got hurt last season but he's a guy with a lot of versatility like he stay he will stick to the roster just because he could probably play both guard spots he could play on the opposite side of the offensive line he, he's making the squad the question is is he going to be a starter 
I don't know if they're going to throw Brandon Coleman to the Wolves like that. I mean, you, you throw him out there and left tackle to be just be a starter, and you're just kind of hoping he kind of gets by with his tools because technically it's not all put together yet. He was a guy, I mean, people were thinking could end up being a guard in the NFL. And I mean, shoot, maybe Nick Algretti's left guard spot isn't isn't nailed in either man maybe that's somewhere coleman can also compete but i do expect daniels and coleman to be on the roster chris paul at best is a reserve he started games last year it wasn't pretty it wasn't great i'm gonna leave it at that it, it just it just wasn't that good uh ricky stromberg someone they drafted in the third round last season out of arkansas uh coming in here to be the backup center uh, I say coming in here. They drafted him last year. He was here last year. Uh, I was surprised he didn't get a go at it. Uh, Nick Gates and thinking Tyler was a Larson uh, kind of held the center, center spot. So I don't know, man. Yeah, I guess Ron Rivera hates start. First of all, Ron Rivera hates starting rookies. So may maybe there was a little rookie bias there. Uh, Michael Dieter is going to be the uh, more depth. They have Trent Scott there at right talk on the other side. Uh, I could see Braden Daniels, them just like having him kick over there or even Brandon Coleman as the depth option. Scott maybe makes the roster. Maybe. I think it's, a, it, I think it's probably maybe a little, I, I, I just, I won't, I won't put, I won't put my, my, my money on it. If they're going to keep, nine or ten ta uh offensive linemen it, it's brain daniels is gonna be there it, he is gonna be there but ultimately you saw my grades for the offense overall i gave the, i'm giving this offense a d plus obviously they can uh exceed expectations but it's year one of a new regime and you got a rookie at the helm I would proceed with caution. I think we're going to see a little simplicity when it comes to the offense. We're going to see a lot of them power run concepts with Brian Thomas, but we're also going to see a lot of the RPO game. And hopefully you stretch that into the uh, play action game and attack deep because you want to take advantage of uh, Jane Daniels deep ball because he's got, he's got a NASA touch on that deep ball. What can I tell you? Let's go ahead and move. To the defense as yeah the defense i don't have doing well either <laughs> i just don't feel that there's a superstar on this defense just yet you're going to be dealing with many new starters there's going to be a lot of a lot of guys getting uh getting involved there in the rotation that i just don't have listed here as starters so um again when i do when i list these guys as defensive starters it's the guys who i think are going to get the most snaps like, I think Jamin Davis is going to be very involved with this with this defense. I just think maybe a guy, I think maybe like Luvu and Wagner might edge him out in snaps. But Jamin Davis is going to be extremely involved. Don't get it twisted. Just don't. Also, Jerzon Newton, there's going to be a question there. How involved is he going to be with the rotation? But I don't think he's going to out-snap. Uh, guys like Allen and Payne, who they have a lot of money invested in. Dante Fowler will also be in that rotation uh, at the edge spot. Uh, Jeremy Chin, again, I think he's going to be that dime backer. And I think he's going to be like a five to 600 snap guy. And again, if the, if these guys stay healthy, he's I don't think he's going to edge out like uh, Percy Butler or uh, Derek Forrest when it comes to um, snaps. I just, I just don't. I think those guys are going to be in like the eight, nine hundred snap range. Chen will be in that like six hundred range, I think, in my opinion. Uh, and then, of course, at corner, it. I'm gonna go with they bring in Michael Davis. Vet, typically, veterans who they who teams bring in will get at least the start early on. Maybe Emmanuel Forbes works his way back in. It's just I think he's too much. I think Forbes is too much of a clash with dan quinn's defense like i don't think forbes is a man corner i just don't unfortunately like i don't think he can deal with the physicality of receivers i think it's he's better off in off coverage so 
I don't know, man. I think Forbes is going to get hung out to dry and might could end up traded at some point, if not during the season, maybe at the end of the next uh, next year's off season. Uh, Mike saying we're still I do have the start as the starter at Salat. Uh, I do think Quan Martin, who they drafted at in the second round out of Illinois in 2023, granted different regime. I think he's going to play more of a safety role as that's something you saw him do at Illinois where he was playing in the slot, he was playing in the box, he was playing deep. He gives them that type of versatility. But for the most part, this is who I think we're going to see from a starting perspective. And this is a this is a defense in, literally in a rebuild. This defense is in a rebuild. I, I can see them being better than, you know, last in the league, but not by much. So let's go ahead. Let's take a look at some of the depth that they have defensively here as we'll start with the defensive line. Dorrance, Armstrong, Cleveland Farrell, they're going to be your starters. And we're going to see Dante Fowler get involved there. And uh, KJ Henry, who kind of came on, I think, near the end of last season. But I think he was a little banged up last year. Um, I don't have an injury designation on him. So may, again, may, I, it goes back to the fact that maybe just Ron Rivera hates rookies. He just does. Uh, they do have uh, Andre Jones, who was kind of a batted pass guy. And they did bring back F.A. Uh, Obata. They did draft Javante Jean-Baptiste at the back end of the seventh round. But he's probably going to be a long shot to actually make the roster and probably ends up on the practice squad. Move into the interior. Uh, you got Drazon Newton's going to be very... He's going to be involved in the rotation when healthy. Uh, Jonathan Allen, man, he's kind of struggled as a run defender, which Dan Quinn hears that. And he's like, ah, oh, no, man. I, ha I had some of my struggles with the run in Dallas. I say struggles. They were still kind of a like middle-of-the-pack unit, but... He's not going to like that. And I think, honestly, Jonathan Allen might be on the way out as this team tries to get a little cheaper. And also, Federian Mathis, he's a fine body there on the interior. They have some other guys there like John uh, Ridgeway, another former, uh, I think it was Arkansas. Oh, they bring in Norrell uh, Pollard out of Virginia Tech. He's undersized, though. I don't think he makes the roster, but... They just lack the star power. Like, Deron Payne might be their biggest star, so to speak, when it comes to the uh, the defensive line. Jonathan Allen is, again, man, the run game is, with him is just like, at best, it's middling. I think he's probably a guy with potentially with his foot already out the door. And then to complete the front seven, let's talk about the linebacker position. I think Jamin Davis is going to be Again, very involved. He made some strides last season, but still there are some coverage hiccups with him. Uh, you could also say the same about Bobby Wagner, but Bobby Wagner, a guy who I, I don't want to say like isn't affected by father time. He, he's not the guy he once was, and that's very apparent in coverage, but he's still a very good minimal game guy. Like, hey, if you're going to pick up like – Hey, hey, hey. If you're going to catch it underneath for four to six yards, those are the only four to six yards you're going to get. Very technically sound as a tackler. Frankie Louvu, man, get this man involved in the as a blitzer. I, I truly think Dan Quinn will. Because, again, I think he does a very good job of scheming up pressure and getting these extra rushers in there uh, to, to just create havoc. So I think Louvu was such a banger sign-in for... The commanders jeremy chin again is going to be in this uh i think this dime backer mold where he's honestly at his best around the line of scrimmage whether it is in the box as a safety as a as a dime backer or even sometimes line it up in the slot so he will he is only on a one-year deal so that that's another big reason why i don't didn't expect him to be kind of a lead snap getter but I do think that there is a role for him in this offense. Looking at the rest of the depth, they bring in Anthony Pittman as a free agent, uh, as well as Mikel Walker. They drafted Jordan McGee, who I really like. A little undersized, but a hella, hella, hella fast, hella quick, tested well, and uh, just 
Ju just aggressive as hell, man. He, he he plays with that physicality. I'm not too worried about him uh, from a physical standpoint. I think I think he, there's a chance that uh, he he probably usurps like Pittman on this. Uh, again, this is early, but this is like our lads' uh, depth chart. I think he kind of like becomes that guy behind Jamin Davis. Uh, Walker again, good depth there. Going to the secondary. The question is, who's starting on the outside, man? Because I think Mike Sanders still is going to be your your nickel. The question is, who, who's starting on the outside? I'm, I'll go with Michael Michael Davis again. They bring him in as a one-year vet or on a one-year deal as a veteran presence. Uh, Benjamin St. Juice has that size. And I do worry about Emmanuel Forbes' ability to be physical. Like, he got bodied all year last year. So... And I, I just, I don't think he meshes well with what, what's what Dan Quinn brings to this defense. I just don't think he's gonna mesh well with the uh, the scheme. But I could be wrong, man. I'm not saying that they're already out on him. I just, I don't, I don't like his odds. Uh, they also grab more depth, uh, bringing in guys like Noah and Big Nagani. They bring in uh, James Pierre. So th those are just depth guys through and through. Uh, honestly, it, I'd be I, I'd be a little shocked if, if Big Nagani ends up uh, making the roster. He's really just a special teamer at this juncture. Big Christian Holmes guy. Don't think he makes the roster. Might be able to hang as like depth. But man, I really liked him coming out of uh, mainly was it coming out of Mizzou because. Uh, his, I think his final year was at, Miz, at uh, Oklahoma State, and it was kind of kind of whatevs. Uh, other guys that might catch my eye, Tyree Castro Fields is a good fit for the scheme. Uh, AJ Woods honestly might come in and could stick to the roster as like a slot defender. And I I really liked uh, Chikozi Anusium out of Colorado State. He's got good size and he's really fast. He was kind of hit or miss on the field, but I think the makings are makings there are of a on of a guy that can stick to this roster. So just be on the lookout for that. At the safety position, I do think your stars are Percy Butler and Derek Forrest. Derek Forrest kind of had that breakout year in 2022, and then unfortunately uh, got hurt in 2023. Ended up going down with a shoulder injury uh, that relegated him to only 300 some snaps last season so I, i've i expect him to kind of be the star in the secondary there jeremy reeves he's he's going to be there just because of well shoot this guy's good at special teams he's making the roster they because of jeremy chin's role they might hold on to another safety and my money's on Quan martin i don't think they're gonna i don't think he's gonna be a slot guy for for this team I don't think that's how they're going to utilize him. If so, then why go out and grab Mike Sane were still with, what was it, like pick 50? So I do think Quan Martin, uh, there there might be a chance that he he could even potentially be a starter there uh, at the safety position. A guy that had a lot of ball skills back at Illinois. And then uh, Dominique Campton, kind of a long shot, I think, to make the roster. But I like this guy's ability in the box. Another guy you could maybe say could be a dime backer. He's got the length. I like the long field speed. But he's at his best coming downhill and making a play. Uh, Tyler Owens is someone to look out for just because he's kind of an athletic freak. Former five-star uh, when he was recruited by Texas. Ends up going to Texas Tech to get more playing time. Uh, it's just, man, this guy, he is right now a incredible athlete playing football man he just i guess i guess you would say don't know what he's doing out there uh i think he's probably a prime name to be on the practice squad but like at the end of the day man i th this defense is still a work in progress when it comes to the run defense i think that might be the best aspect of this squad and that's not saying much uh the pass rush again no real superstars there so it's heavily going to be um leaning on dan quinn's ability to scheme all this up and then i mean 
Dude, when it comes to their coverage, ah, they don't, I just don't think they have a guy there yet. I just don't. Shoot, maybe at the end of the day, like, now that I'm thinking about this, like, Mike Sainer still, maybe he ends up having a similar trajectory as, like, a Duran Bland did in Dallas. Duran Bland came in and was like, okay, this, this is a, an upgrade in the slot. And then because of injury this past season, had to kick outside and ended up having like one hell of a season. Eight pick sixes. I'm not saying Max Sainer still can do that. But I mean, Sainer still did have six interceptions last year. But maybe, I know he's a bit undersized, but might, might end up being someone that, that can play a little bit outside. I don't think it's out of the realm of possibility. I just don't think it's that likely. All in all, man. Uh, I think this defense will will end up being a bit of the Achilles heel when it comes to the squad. And now we're at the part of the video where I give you my projection for how the commanders are going to do in 2024. I think currently Vegas better odds have their over under at six and a half. And with everything I've said here, new regime, rookie quarterback, kind of a rebuild i would bet the under there just saying can they hit six i think i think winning six is definitely definitely possible i kind of already went over uh when it looked at some of the games i think that they can win uh with the giants uh well, you got the cardinals panthers uh steelers so that the, the Steelers team is coming off their bye they can maybe sneak one from the cowboys you got the titans but like looking at their roster, starting off against the, the Buccaneers at home, I think Buccaneers win that, man. I think Buccaneers, they might not be like a Super Bowl caliber team, but they are definitely a playoff team. I think that's going to be a tough win, especially for, well, Jaden Daniels making his first career start. I think that's just going to be uh, difficult from there. You get a home game against the Giants, but now then you got to travel to Cincinnati and take on a healthy Joe Burrow, Jamar uh, Chase, uh, a pissed off T Higgins who, who wants money. I don't think that ends well for the commanders, but I mean, you go travel to Arizona. Arizona's kind of in a similar boat, kind of, sort of. Uh, then, I mean, having to take on the NFC North. In weeks uh, five and six with the Browns, because who the hell knows what the Browns are, and the Ravens. Uh, I do think th this one against the Panthers is very winnable. Uh, the Panthers, I could definitely see making a jump, but I don't think they're going to be much better than they were last season. But that's for the Panthers deep dive video. Uh, we get a battle of uh, <laughs> of the first and second overall picks taken in Jaden Daniels and Caleb Williams, uh, the Bears will be coming off their bye, so yeah, I mean, it's kind of, and I just think the Bears are a more well put together team at this juncture, so I kind of do give the edge to the Bears. But uh, before heading to uh, shoot, I mean, your bye is not till week 14, that's kind of wild. It's a late season bye, I, I don't love that. I kind of like mid season buys, I think they're a little bit better, but uh, I think you could beat the Steelers. Steelers, I honestly don't know like what's going to go on with uh. Russell Wilson, Justin Fields, how that saga is going to go. It's going to be very fascinating, though. It is going to be very, very fascinating. Uh, all in all, I have the Commanders with the 12th easiest schedule in the league. Uh, I, I I think that they, they can get some wins here. They can get some wins. I think it's still going to be tough. I got them going, and this is me lowballing it. This is I, I honestly think this is probably their floor. I think their floor is three wins. I got them going three and 14. Ceiling six, floor is three. But for the sake of this deep dive series, because if you don't know, essentially I have to I have to make for sure picks on all these because I use it for a draft order at the end of the series or a 2025 NFL mock draft. So I do have the commanders. Picking first overall next year, which, hey, that's great, man. Maybe some edge talent will be there. Uh, I'm just getting into the edge class actually this week, so I'm very, very excited. But let me know what you think in the comment section below, Commanders fans. Get your comrades out. You may not be good this year, but.
but I think you're trending in the right direction. You have got your quarterback. I think you have the right coaching staff. I honestly do. I like Dan Quinn really er, quite a bit as a defensive minded coach and Cliff Kingsbury. I think there's some good to be had with that. I just think this is a team that is just starting their rebuild. They kind of gutted parts of the roster. There's a question mark at left tackle. You really don't have that star at edge. The cornerback room is kind of a hot mess. Like the again, there's just too many questions when it comes to that. But if you want to know more about the 2025 NFL draft, because I know you're going to want to because you're a Commanders fan, check out those videos down here. I've already started my summer deep dives. I've gone through quarterbacks. I've gone through defensive interior, and I'll continue to go through more positions as the summer goes on. But as always, until next time, be easy, my friends. Later.